Good morning to uh, this first huddle of the week. Of course, we're on Tuesday. I hope that you enjoyed your Memorial Day, that it was a day of uh, fellowship, of family, um, of cookouts, of rest, whatever that day may have held for you. Of course, we're very grateful as we remember uh, those who have given their lives um, on our part um, to um, keep our freedoms and uh, our opportunities alive. Obviously, we want to uh, always remember that Memorial Day was also uh, set apart for that reason. Not also, it was set apart for that reason. Um, so we are very grateful for those who have given their lives. Well, over the course of the last couple of weeks, as we've gotten into Hebrews, we've established that Jesus was fully God. We've established that Jesus is fully man. And now we're going to uh, show how Jesus is superior over all of the Old Covenant. And uh, this begins, chapter 3 begins a section of Hebrews in which the writer of Hebrews is going to establish Jesus' superiority over that old way. And I think it's important as we continue to read through these next chapters that we understand the context that the writer of Hebrews is writing in and, and to whom he's writing, to these Jewish Christians, to understand the mindset of these Jewish Christians. You know, for, for the Jewish Christian, uh, Moses... Or, or I should I should say for the Jew, uh, for the Jew, not necessarily the Jewish Christian, but for the Jew, Moses was the greatest man that ever lived, right? It was to him that God gave the law. It was to him that God gave the authority to build the tabernacle. It was he that delivered the people out of slavery from Egypt um, uh, that God worked through. And, um, you know, he was right up there with, with Abraham, um, with all that he did and all the miracles and wonders that God had done through him. So if you think about the religious system um, that was established in Moses, um, it, would, it would be very hard to understand a, a new covenant unless you show that um, this new covenant is superior to that of the old established in Moses, that Jesus is superior to Moses. Uh, you would have to understand... Uh, Jesus in the context of, of Moses, uh, if you were a, a Jew and, and um, trying to establish uh, your Christian faith and not go back to those Jewish ways. Um, and this is what the Hebrew writer does. Uh, again, in chapter 3, he'll make a number of parallels between Moses and Christ. He'll make a number of contrasts between Moses and Christ. And uh, of course, at the end of it all, you'll see that Jesus is superior. Um, they'll, they'll both be seen as great leaders. Moses began with the Exodus that led the people out of Egypt and out of the bondage, bondage and slavery of Pharaoh. Um, the final destination, of course, of his Exodus was the land of Canaan, that promised land that God had promised to Abraham in his covenant centuries before. So both in parallel and in contrast, Jesus has begun our spiritual Exodus Jesus has freed us from the bondage and the slavery of sin, and he has lead, led us to the ultimate land of promise, eternal life in heaven itself. And so that's the context as we jump into chapter 3 that we need to just keep in mind as we go along. And I, I'm only going to read the first six verses this morning as we jump into our study this week. Therefore, holy brothers... Um, again, calling us brothers, holy brothers. Remember he said before that Jesus calls us brothers who share in the heavenly calling. We are part of this covenant. Fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. He was faithful to the one who appointed him just as Moses was faithful in all, in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses just as the builder of the house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was the faithful servant of God in his house, testifying to what would be said in the future. But Christ, but Jesus, is faithful as a son over God's house. He has that authority. Moses was a servant. Jesus is the son. And we are his house if we hold on to the courage and hope of which we boast. So the writer of Hebrews starts off here by addressing these Jewish Christians as holy brothers. Remember, again, Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers. Don't let this chapter um, cause us to forget what we've just learned, that, that as Christians, we've been called sons, we've been called brothers, we are children of the Most High God, that Jesus is divinely God, and 
but was also fully man and is not ashamed to call us brothers. Therefore, we are holy brothers. We have been set apart because of Jesus. Um, holy comes from the Greek word hagios, um, and it means something that is pure, morally blameless, um, consecrated. It is a, a most holy thing. And so through Jesus Christ, we have been set apart, become something consecrated, a most holy thing. And if you think back to that word consecration, we talked a lot about that in our study of Leviticus. Another meaning of the word is separated both morally and spiritually. We are separate from sin, therefore consecrated to God. We are sacred, Sa separated from sin, sacred now through Jesus Christ. Um, once devoted to sin, now devoted to God. And um, we have manifested the moral qualities of God in our life as we obey his word and as we exemplify the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. We are separate from the world and set apart for God. We are holy. So keep that in mind as we continue through this week in this context as parallel Christ and Moses. Moses led the people out of Egypt, but of course those people... Uh, <laughs> It didn't take them very long to start building idols, to start grumbling and all of that stuff. They were not a holy and set apart people. So when Jesus sets apart, when Jesus brings about our exodus, he makes us holy. People that are, are for God's purpose and God's mission. So keep that in mind as we continue through this study. Read through chapter 3. That will be our focus of this week. Hey, let me close in prayer this morning. Lord God, thank you that we are called holy. And that's only through Jesus. And we are called brothers. That also is only through Jesus. So let us live set apart lives, holy lives that exemplify the moral qualities of who Jesus is. We pray this in his name. Amen. Ready? Break.